in the last lecture we looked at rotations about one of the axis of the bases and we also looked at rotations that were about the origin in this lecture we will look at arbitrary rotations about points that are not located at the origin and we will also look at the shear transformation general rotation about the origin is simple if you want to achieve rotation that is about an arbitrary v vector but we still want to perform rotation about the origin all we need to do is to perform rotations about the individual x axis y axis and z axis and then concatenate these rotations you know multiply the 4 by 4 transformation matrices to get our arbitrary transformation matrix the three angles that will achieve this arbitrary rotation are called the euler angles you know so we want to uh, perform a rotation that is neither about the x y or z axis but that is a combination of these three angular rotations these three angles that will achieve the arbitrary rotation are called Euler angles. Note that rotations do not commute. We can use rotations in another order but with different angles. So uh, it is important to be aware of the order of the rotations to achieve a certain desired effect. Rotation about a fixed point other than the origin is a little complicated. In the previous lecture, we were performing all rotations about the origin. If let's say if you want to rotate this cube which ha which is a collection of say eight points now all these points individually would want to get rotated about the origin but we want to rotate this cube about its this other point which could be its center of gravity or uh, or some other arbitrary point in most cases if you want to see an object rotating we want to see it rotating about its center of gravity so to achieve this is simple first we translate the object to the origin now or all previous formulas hold now we perform our rotation to rotate the object to a new desired orientation and then finally translate it back to the original point and hence we have achieved the desired rotation effect so within these three steps the next uh, four slides that is up to slide seven basically further explained what I just uh, mentioned that is rotation about an arbitrary point other than the origin so if you have understood that fully you can skip uh, up to slide 7 and then uh, go to slide 8 so let's look at a 2d example of rotation about an arbitrary point that is not the origin so we want to rotate this square about its center of gravity which is point P before rotation we have the square like this and after rotation we have the square like this now this is different than rotating this whole square and ending up uh, the, the square in the same orientation somewhere here we should have been the rotation uh, of the square about the uh, origin this is not what we want to do this is what we want to achieve we want to rotate the square so that it stays in, in its original location but it gets rotated its orientation changes and the rotation is uh, about the z-axis so we have a flat, flat simple rotation now the first step is to translate the square so that it its center of gravity or the point P is at the origin 0 0 the second step is to apply the desired rotation RZ so this is the translation translate by minus P so when you translate with minus P P will go to the origin and now we rotate it with angle theta about the z-axis here we have achieved the desired rotation and after we have achieved the desired rotation we translate it back to the original point and we get our final result so a negative translation followed by a rotation and then by a positive translation to the original point now let's look at uh, instancing in modeling we often start with a simple object centered at the origin oriented with the axis and at a standard size so let's say we may have a model of an apple uh, which uh, the points of which are defined around its center of gravity the center of gravity at, is at the uh, origin and we have these points defined at a certain scale now we might want to 
generate multiple instances of this apple at different sizes because apples might occur in nature uh, uh, with a little bit size variations and of course they can be lying in different orientations so we can scale this object we can uh, orient this object and then translate it to the desired location and we can perform this operation for multiple times and create let's say 10 instances of this these apples to fill up a basket and we can put all of them at different orientations and at different scales and at different locations so this is called instancing so we apply instance transformations to its vertices to scale it orient it and locate it and we can repeat these three steps let's say 10 times or any number of times to create that many instances of this object okay let's look at one more transformation the shearing transformation shearing is equivalent to pulling faces in opposite directions for example consider this cube if we pull these vertices in this direction we will get a deformed cube like this this kind of transformation is called shearing transformation the shearing matrix basically is of this form where we have a cotangent theta where theta is the angle of shear which is if points were originally at x y they move to x dash y dash such that the angle between these points are now theta and with the transformation matrix we can represent it like this 